back to Sleepcraft Sunday. Now, man, last year was a blast. I had so much fun um, trying to push myself to learn more and share that with you guys, as well as learn from you guys. And it was a wonderful experience. I feel like the build went further than it would have had I not been getting the constant push to make more of these. And in the past month or two, I've had people leave comments on all the other projects I'm working on to say, hey, when Sleecraft Sunday is coming back? Well, this is the first episode. So last year, I completely rebuilt the hall of a 1986 Sleecraft SST twin tunnel hall. This was a hall developed for Mod BP Racing. It's very fast, it's an air entrapment hall. Um, I'm really looking forward to it because my Sleecraft Aristocrat, which is a Mercruiser V8, uh, that thing is awesome, but the problem with that boat is ultimately the outdrive. And I know that there's outboard versus inboard dudes and stern drives are better, outboards are better, whatever. I like both of them. Personally, I feel like the lines on a boat and the aesthetic are a lot better without the outboard sticking up on the back. But I do love me some vintage 2.4, 2.5 liter Mercury two-stroke stuff. I grew up around tunnel hull race boats and the sound these things make just, ah, oh, I love it, I love it. So the problem with the stern drive on the Aristocrat is that it's too long. So I'm using a regular Alpha outdrive and what I've been looking for for years and have been unable to find is an Alpha SS outdrive which has a shortened X dimension. That helps get the gear case not so deep in the water which is perfect for a high performance haul with a shallow draft like uh, an Aristocrat or SST or something. So, and right now the Aristocrat pretty much tops out around 63 miles an hour. It's okay but the, the whole point of that haul is air entrapment and with that big cast iron V8 in front of the transom um, it really doesn't start to get air entrapment in that hull, it's too heavy. I do feel it if I have a little bit of a headwind, like if there's a 5 to 10 mile an hour headwind and I floor it and I get into it, uh, it starts to feel amazing. So if I did find an Alpha SS, I could pretty much remove the outdrive from my boat, bolt up the SS and gain 5 to 7 miles an hour, which would be close to 70 miles an hour. And I have a feeling that would make all the difference in that boat. But you know what, like I said, also like two strokes. Uh, this year we're going to be rigging the SST with a 2.4 liter two stroke Mercury and it's, I don't know, I want to say it's like late 80s, early 90s. There's going to be a ton of how-to videos and tech stuff on this 2.4 liter because I'm planning on rebuilding the carbs and just going through the thing overall as well as blessing that gear case. I don't know how deep I'm going to get into that. Um, we also have to refurbish the jack plate. I did get a foot throttle, so that's going in pretty soon. 
the seats are being rebuilt. I don't know, there's, there's a lot to do on that boat, but I'm trying to get it ready for 4th of July weekend. We'll see if that happens, but that is my goal. So having said that, I want to talk about the history of this channel. And this is going to be real talk. And maybe some of you will be like, you know what? I hate this guy. Unsubscribe. That's fine. Okay. I do this for fun. I, I literally started my channel like 10 years ago, but it was just for random things. So if you go deep into the history, you're going to find a whole bunch of weird stuff. But I started really building this channel when COVID hit. And the reason I did that is because I was stuck at home. I don't know if you all know this, but uh, my girlfriend, Sarah, uh, she is a cancer survivor. She was diagnosed with breast cancer a few years ago, and she made it through two surgeries later. Total badass, rode a snowmobile through chemo. We went skiing, it was great. The thing is, is that when you are past that, people are like, yeah, you made it, but you never quite make it with cancer because it's always like one of those things that can still happen. So what you'll find is that after treatment, you are still on anti-cancer medication, which is what Sarah is on right now. So before we get started in this real talk, I'm going to say a couple things. One, I'm going to try not to get angry. I'm going to try to communicate well. And I'm going to say none of this is really political because I'm not a fan of the two-party system. I'm going to talk about this just a little bit. This is not a political channel, but COVID has been politicized. Now, I don't really fit with a blue team because I like big smoky motors and firearms and going fast and I don't really like living in the city. I like the freedom that America has in certain areas that don't have speed limits, mainly uh, boats and snowmobiles. Um, so not really on their team. I haven't voted for a blue guy in 20 years. Now the red team, I'm going to talk to you guys a second because there is a lot of you in the boating community and just in general, and man, boats are not political, okay? Like I grew up in the 80s and boats were about going fast and having a good time and enjoying being alive. And you people who are flying political flags on your boat and like you've just replaced your whole identity with politics, like <laughs> lame dudes, lame. You know what's not lame? Freaking 200, 300 horsepower outboards and like headers and big motors and stuff. but. Putting some other dude's name on a flag on your boat, like, nah, not cool. And I want to keep going on this because when COVID started, I remember everyone being unified and th there was like this, whoa, stuff's happening. And everyone was aligned. Everyone was taking it seriously. And some of you guys were rioting for toilet paper and hand sanitizer in the aisles of Walmart. And then magically overnight, a reality TV star told you it was a hoax, and all of you collectively just said, nah, this stuff isn't real anymore. Well, it is real, okay? Um, I've known people in my life who have died from COVID. We have had deaths at work. Uh, I think the last guy was like 46, 47, which used to seem really far away, but today doesn't seem so far away. I get that a lot of you are saying, oh, but it's just the, the elderly, it's just the frail. Well, here's the thing, dudes, Sarah is immunocompromised. So you're kind of saying you don't care if she dies. Like that's basically what you're saying. And it's not just the fact that you're doing that. Like I have to wear a mask when I go in anywhere because if I get sick, according to Sarah's oncologist who went to school for I don't know how many years for really hard stuff. And I, and I got to say the people who did go into the medical field, I remember them growing up. Do you guys remember them growing up? They were smarter than like most of us. Okay. There's a reason I don't work in the medical field. So what I'm going to do because I can trust other people's judgment is default to the experts. And that's the other thing, red team. Somehow you keep, you keep claiming your experts in everything. Like it changes week to week. You're pretty much experts in everything, no matter what, without any formal training or education. You're smarter than microbiologists, scientists, constitutional scholars, geopolitical historians. Like, it's crazy to me that these people that think they're smarter than like literally everyone, they're all kind of the dumbest people I grew up with. So that should tell you something if you're one of those people claiming that. Maybe you should look around 
and be like, yeah, these weren't the honor students. These, this was the kid that put the frog leg of the dissected frog in his mouth in middle school. Like, is that really who you want on your team? I don't. I'm rambling a bit, but basically, I don't know what you want me to do. I'm talking to the blue team and the red team here, as well as everyone else, because I see the way you people look at me when I wear a mask in stores. I'm pretty much the only person in this area who wears a mask anymore because I don't want to kill my girlfriend, okay? So you look at me and some of you chuckle, like, oh, here comes this guy. And it's like, <laughs> what are you trying to project here? Like, if you're trying to say that I'm a wuss for wearing my mask to protect my girlfriend, that's kind of messed up. And if you're trying to say, I'm a big macho manly man, I don't need a mask, it's just a virus. You know, you're also again saying you don't care if you kill my girlfriend. So the way I'm interpreting that like machismo that you're like trying to put out there, I'm interpreting that as compensation and insecurities for possibly penile inadequacy, I don't know, erectile dysfunction. I'm not saying you have those things. I am saying if that's the vibe you're putting out, that's what I'm picking up. Because really, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be snickering at people who are trying to protect people in their lives who could die from this, okay? Like that's super shitty. And on top of that, the final nail in the coffin for me of the red team was that when Sarah was grocery shopping, she had some of those red hat people cough at her, okay? So like they literally would walk by as she was shopping and cough loudly to trigger her or like own the libs or harass a cancer patient. Like how can you be on that team? And, and, and let's, let's spread this out a little bit. I'm not specifically talking to the red players here. I'm going to talk to the blue people. You guys have largely been just as bad. You've said, I don't give a shit. I'm getting mine. You know what? I got a vaccine. I'm not going to mask up. I'm going to keep going to Bucks games. I'm going to keep going to weddings. I'm going to keep going to big social events. And you keep spreading it. And now what we have is, I don't know if you guys know this, but this is going to be factual. And then um, I'm just going to drop some facts on you. In February 2022, the CDC changed the colors of their graph. So overnight, the risk map of COVID went from this to this. Okay, no change in data, or just change the colors of the map. And this is because midterms are coming up. So what's happening right now is the blue team is pressuring the CDC to change guidelines so that they can pretend everything is fine. And you blue guys, you're eating it up. You're going to big concerts. You're going to big weddings. You don't give a shit anymore. So now I have the blue people that look at me like I'm crazy, the red people that look at me like I'm a wuss, and meanwhile, if you look at the actual data, okay, the numbers, if you go back a year ago, we had about 35,000 cases a day. A year later, two days ago, we had 163,000 cases. That is an increase of like 500%, 600%. I don't know. I'm not great at math. That's why I didn't go into the medical field, and that's why I trust other people's judgments. But what's happening right now is you're seeing political pressure to push both the red team and the blue team to say COVID is over. And the reason they are doing this is dollar signs. Corporations have these massive offices that they're paying tons of money in property taxes and upkeep costs, and they want people to return to work. Everything's fine. You know what? It's not, okay? It's not for people like me. And I don't know what you want me to do. Now, we're gonna keep building cool boats because I'm stuck at home. We're gonna be building this Porsche, we're gonna be building a bus, we're gonna be building a van, we're gonna be doing all sorts of cool stuff this year. But the reason I'm able to do this and the reason I'm building all this stuff is because I can't go anywhere. And as time goes on, I don't really know what I'm supposed to do. It seems like the world is saying COVID is over, the data is saying, no, it's not. And if you look at the history, every time winter happens, COVID is spiking. This happens with any major pandemic. Winter is bad for diseases and viruses. And if we go into winter with a high rate, it's gonna be crazy. Like, and, and I don't know if you know this, but like you, you people who are vaccinated, you're not protected anymore. About 40% of the COVID deaths are 100% vaccinated and boosted people now. Does that mean the vaccine doesn't work? No, but what you're seeing happen is the virus evolve 
And as it changes, our vaccines become less and less effective at protecting us. So we are all losing protection, regardless of whether or not we're vaccinated. The government is saying it's over. The red team's saying you're a wuss. The blue team's saying, woo, party! Like, what, what do you want me to do? I don't know. So anyway, thanks for listening to this. I know it's been a long rambling discussion. We are going to have a lot of fun this year, but I am hurt and stressed out about the way people are acting. And if, if you see someone with a mask on, I mean, maybe they're a completely healthy person, but maybe they have someone in their lives that they care about that they don't want to get sick. And I don't know why this has become such a thing, but it is just crazy to me. And I don't know what to say, okay? Like, I'm focusing on this stuff and tuning out the rest of the world, largely because most of you guys are Holes. So anyway, there's uh, Sleepcraft Sunday's episode number, I don't even know, first one of this year. I know it's been a lot of talking and I know it's been a lot of non-boat stuff, but I wanted to get this out there because I know this is probably going to be one of the popular videos and go ahead and hit that dislike button, but I'm being real with you. Like, you can, you can kill my girlfriend. COVID is still happening. I'm sorry that you wish it wasn't. I'm sorry that you feel it wasn't. I wish it wasn't too, but unfortunately, the data, the facts over feelings tell me that it is still happening. So uh, I guess until then, stay tuned. We're going to be building a whole bunch of stuff on this channel because I can't go anywhere because COVID is still a thing. All right. Cheers.